read. Come join the conversation as Anne will focus on helping you feel happier and thrive instead of just survive. Anne shares some of her life experiences and how she has learned to overcome her own painful times. So please welcome the host of Be Happier in Spite of Your Life, Anne Reed. I am Ann Reed, and I want to welcome you to my show, Be Happier in Spite of Your Life, on Bow Brave TV Network. I am an executive life coach, and I work with helping people learn to be happier, no matter what's going on in their lives. Whether they've lost someone, they're having financial issues, they have a kid who's not doing so well, whatever the variety is because I truly believe that being happy is a choice. And it doesn't mean that we don't experience the negative emotions too, but we can change our attitude and get a lot more joy out of life. So why be happier? I always start my show with this because research is proving that happiness actually comes before success. And it's the one thing that has been scientifically shown and proven to improve health, have better relationships, and more wealth. Besides, I've never heard of anyone who wanted to be unhappier. I am doing this show because it's one of my ways of trying to reach out to others and help them, or maybe you, not feel so alone and so hopeless. I want to end up with you being inspired and feeling like you can make your life better and you can find more joy. Now, everyone defines happiness slightly differently, and that's okay. It really does run the gamut from the exhilaration, like when your team wins the Super Bowl, to maybe it's just contentment and happy sitting there in a warm living room with your cat on your lap. Some people define it as the absence of negativity. However you want to define it is fine. It's your choice. My foundational philosophy, which my guests will definitely agree with, is that life generally gives you about 50% good things and 50% bad. And it's how we deal with the bad that's the challenge. Most of us do really well when everything's going our way. Anyway, besides the fact that we can choose to be happy, I do also teach some skills. There are certain things we can do to achieve that state and not be so sad or morose or angry or what have you. And most of them don't cost any money and take very little time. So today, I have an incredible guest. She is almost like superwoman. Now, I know I've brought on guests before who've all had adversity in their life, some of them more than one thing. But when you go through the litany of what Valerie has survived and thrived, she's chosen not to be a victim. She's chosen to get back up. I think you will agree that she is a pretty amazing human being. She even inspires me. She was raped during a job interview, lost her dad to substance abuse issues, has lost friends through being murdered even for cancer. She also lost her husband to cancer. So she is widowed and is now a single mom of four. Imagine, talk about resiliency, which I have on some of my previous shows. It's that ability, that inner grit that some of us, I don't know if we're born with it or we choose to have it, but you get up and keep going, or as I describe it some days, I considered putting one foot in front of the other a huge 
success. It turns out that Valerie and I share some characteristics. We both have turned the horrible times in our lives into life lessons that we are willing to share with others and hopefully give them hope and inspiration. We also, on some level, believe that there's some cosmic plan, that there's a reason that we went through these things and have come out on the other side. And we really perceive that as a gift to help others and give them hope by going public with some of our stories, writing books, doing this TV show, doing podcasts. So now I would like to open the door to Valerie Yoshe and let her introduce herself and give you some more details. Valerie, the floor is yours. Hi, Anne. Thank you for Hello. having me on your show. I'm <laughs> so excited. Uh, well, my name is Valerie Yosue. I am 41 years old. As you mentioned, I'm a single mom of four children. I have a 16-year-old daughter, a 16-year-old son, a 10-year-old daughter, and my youngest daughter is nine. I grew up in Philadelphia, but I live in New Jersey. Um, I model, I teach ballet, I do ballet modeling. Um, I recently got into runway. Um, so, you know, most of my time is being a mom, um, but I do dance and modeling and runway and I do some really fun shows in New York as well. I also have a podcast called Dancing in the Rain with Valerie and, um, I love how you mentioned just cosmically because I just really, after talking to you, um, you know, our ideas and philosophies on life just are totally aligned. I know. That was fascinating <laughs> with someone who's kind of traveling a parallel path. And hopefully we would be converging and doing more together. But it was really interesting. It um, was. I know. And it was another cosmic thing that I realized in the middle of the night that you, the mm -hmm. person that introduced me and myself, have all lost our significant others or husbands, and they had the same first name, which was kind of bizarre. <laughs> so It's all connected. It is all connected. So what have been... Um, well, I think I'm gonna do the format. I'll have you, when we come back in a minute after our um, intermission for our sponsor. Um, anyway, this is Ann Reed, and I can't wait to come back with Valerie and have her describe what some of her absolute worst moments would be. And this is the Bow Brave TV Network. Be happier in spite of your life. All right, Valerie, I'd love for you to share now that we're back on Be Happier in Spite of Your Life and read on Bow Brave TV Network. Um, I know you have said that you were willing to share your experiences to let others know that it is possible to learn how to thrive after trauma. So would you mind sharing a couple of events that you've had that maybe at the time you weren't quite sure you were gonna get through? Definitely. Um, I just wanted to say this before I get into any of my experiences because I love that you use the word thrive. And um, I was actually introduced to um, the word Sir Thriver um, a few months ago oh. when I was on another show. And I really like that word. I, you know, We hear the word survivor all the time and surviving things is great, but thriving is better. And I love yes. that you use that word. I'm gonna um, I feel first, that. <laughs> yes, or thriver, I use it all the time. I love it. Um, so the fir my first real experience with grief was when I was 25 years old. Um, my dad was um, a drug and alcohol. Uh, he was an addict my whole life off and on. He would have periods of time where he was okay. Um, so I was 25 and I was pregnant and he went away to a rehab facility in Florida. 
And he came back and he said he felt great and he was super excited to be a grandfather. And it was a happy time. Everybody was really excited getting ready for the baby. And um, my grandmother called me on July 1st and she said, you know, your dad passed away. And I just remember sitting in bed and screaming and crying. And I had to call my mom who and my brother, they live in Colorado. And I had to tell them that I just found out that, you know, I had to tell my brother that our dad passed away. Um, I, I, I really don't have a word for the state of mind that I was in because I had never experienced that before. Um, I, it, it's just a blur. I remember going to my grandmoms, everybody was crying and I just kept thinking this can't be happening. Like I was just talking to my dad two days ago. He can't be gone. Um, yeah. so the funeral, the, the, I remember walking into the viewing and that's when it really, really hit me because there's pictures and videos and, you know, the whole family's there and his body was there at the viewing. And that's when it really hit me. Like my dad is gone. Um, and it was also a very weird time because I was pregnant. So I had people coming up to me saying, you know, you really have to calm down and take care of yourself for the baby. And I'm like, okay, my dad just died. I've never even experienced anything like this before. I'm doing the best I can. Like I'm, you know. So um, after the viewing and the funeral, uh, I just remember I wanted to immediately go back to work. I was a massage therapist at the time. Um, I just wanted to stay busy and I just didn't see the purpose of staying home and crying all the time. So I just went with it. I went back to work. Uh, that being said, I do remember driving home from work and sometimes just screaming on the top of my lungs um, because, there. you know, yep. <laughs> nobody could hear me. I was driving and I was alone and I figured, you know, I just need to get this out. Like I felt crazy at times. I, th I was just completely out of control for me. I, my dad was gone and there was nothing I could do. Um, I did go to counseling, which helped a little bit. Um, but like you said, you know, I think what kind of helped in a weird way was that a couple months later I became a mom and I told myself, you know, this is it. I can't be laying around crying and screaming all the time. Now I have a crying baby who needs me. So I just jumped right into mom mode. Um, and that really helped uh, because I had a focus and the focus was. I find when you have to do something for somebody else, like yes. when I went through two deaths right together, significant other and my mom, it, when you have to get up, whether it's feed your cat or get your kids on the school bus or whatever, it's that little thread that pulls you out of yourself. <laughs> if that it's makes very sense. helpful to have to do things. Yes. I have to. Yeah. Right. It is. Um, it definitely was helpful um, in such a weird way. Um, so you know, that was kind of uh, the push I needed, I guess. Uh, I, you know, still miss my dad to this day, even though that was, you know, 16 years ago. Um, but like I said, just becoming a mom and having to jump into that role really helps me with that. So that was my first experience with grief. It was awful. And, um, you know, like we've talked about, it was very ugly at times. And, yeah. um, you know, I still miss my dad. But then... Um, you know, I have lost a lot of people, but I'm going to jump to 2019 just because that's when, um, a huge shift in my life happened. So, uh, my husband was diagnosed with stage four esophageal cancer in 2018, July of 2018. And he had a very rough, uh, battle with it. Um, his treatments were brutal chemo. Uh, he was not eligible for surgery because the cancer was all over his body. Um, I just remember going to the cancer center and he had a PET scan. And then we went upstairs to talk to the oncologist and the doctor looked at us and said, I really can't believe, you know, at your age, he was 40 years old. He said, I, I really have never seen anything like this. It's in your liver, your stomach, your lymph nodes, it's everywhere. And it just really felt like a death sentence. And I just remember feeling like I was, you know, in a fog, like just walking around like a zombie. Like I couldn't even believe what was happening, that this was real. Um, 
So, and also this was my first experience with cancer. I didn't know anything about cancer before this. One of those had, subjects you really don't want to have to know more about is how right. I define it, having gone through it with my mom and whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So having no experience with it. And then my first experience with, with it is that my husband is diagnosed with stage four esophageal cancer. I mean, my mind was blown. Um, so he went through brutal treatments and that, um, you know, that was one of the hardest things I've ever gone through, especially because it wasn't just me going through it. It was us going through it as a family and what the kids and I had to watch for nine months was really awful. Um, he went, he was such a big, strong man and he lost a hundred pounds. So he was, uh, smaller than I, you know, when he passed away, he was smaller than me. He was very fragile. Um, towards the end, he had to use a walker. So it was just very upsetting what we had to watch him go through. Um, and then he went to hospice. We were there for a week and then he passed away on April 25th, 2019. Um, so that was probably one of the most awful things I experienced. And then I hadn't even started to process that my husband was gone. I was a single mom, like I'm alone with the kids now. And uh, one of my best friends, Sarah passed away two weeks later. Wow. Hold um, on to that. And we'll start back up with Sarah. And, uh, and some really, your really significant losses. So this is Anne Reed on Be Happier and Believe It or Not, even listening to Valerie's story, she is a happy person on Bold Brave TV Network. We will be this is Be Happier in Spite of Your Life with Anne Reed on Bold Brave TV Network. And we will resume with Valerie, who's just shared watching her husband with esophageal cancer going into hospice, and then her best friend. So Valerie, the rest of your story, or then maybe I should say the next step in your story. Yeah, it's the never ending story. That's what I <laughs> yes, tell people. the never ending story. It's really the never ending story. Um, so my youngest daughter's birthday is in the beginning of May and Mark had just passed away. And I was thinking, how do you even sell, how do you even have a birthday party when you're a little kid and you just lost your dad? Like, how do, do we even have right. a party? Is that weird? That how I don't know. to celebrate afterwards is right. excruciating so, question. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just went to her and I said, do you want to have a party? And she said, yes. Um, and she gave me a list of friends to invite. So we had a full blown birthday party at our house and everything was awesome. And I just, I will never forget this moment. She was on the trampoline with her friends and I was watching her thinking, I can't believe how she's capable of being so resilient and so happy. It was like a regular birthday party to her. And she came over to me on the trampoline and she said, mom, this is the best day ever. This is the best party ever. And I was just like, wow. What a gift. It was such a gift and I was so happy that she was able to be happy. I mean, I just, it was crazy. So all of her friends left the party um, and I saw uh, the fire trucks and the ambulance pull up to my friend Sarah's house because there was only one house separating ours. So we're cleaning up from like the best birthday party and I, my mom was visiting and I said, keep all the kids here. I have to run down there and see what's happening. Okay. So I walked, well, ran down there and uh, Sarah's husband opened the door and he said, she is gone. And for a couple seconds, I was thinking like, what do you, like, what do you mean? Like, like packed a suitcase and left? <laughs> yeah. Like what, for a couple seconds, I was just like, it, there was something in my mind that was like, that's not even possible for it to be what I think you're saying. Yeah. And then I realized that's exactly what he meant. And I just remember screaming and crying outside. Um, and then I went inside and it was just her husband and I, and we're, you know, he's panicking. It was a nightmare to say the least. And I went into her room where she was and I laid in the bed with her and I just 
lost it. I just completely lost it. I just could not believe it was like living in a nightmare. It was really like a nightmare. I texted my mom. I said, do not let the kids come down there because my friends, my kids and her kids were friends. So they would run back and forth. Yeah. We lived so close together. I said, do not let the kids come down here. Sarah is dead. So, um, yeah, that happened 16 days after my husband died. Um, so after that, you know, we talked about being in a dark place. Um, I was in a really dark place for several months. Um, so I just remember doing what I had to do, which there were lots of things I had to do, which was a good thing because it kept me moving sometimes. Yeah. I had to get my kids to school. I had to feed them, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I had to pick them up from school. I had to get them to and from their activities. But other than that, um, I just wanted to sleep. So I would drop them off at school and then I would immediately go home and crawl in my bed with my cat and sleep for most of the day. I didn't really even care about eating. I just wanted to sleep. And then I would set the alarm, pick them up from school, do all the things I had to do, make them dinner, bring them to dance. And then as soon as they went to bed, I was right back in bed. Like I just wanted to sleep. So I did that for a couple months. And then I just had a moment one day where I sat up in the bed and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I didn't feel bad about doing it for a couple months. I said, I feel like I needed, it was very healing. I needed to do that. But I'm like, I can't keep doing this. This can't be what I do that can't forever. can't be life. Yeah. <laughs> this can't be my life. I can't just lay in yeah. bed with my cat. Like, this is crazy. So I had this amazing idea that I was going to go back to ballet, even though it had been 21 years since I did ballet. And a part of me thought, like, are you crazy? Maybe you're really losing it because you're, you know. And when she years. says ballet, she goes back to the point shoes. This isn't right. like just standing at a bar and limbering up. <laughs> right. It was a very specific thought. It had to be point yeah. shoes and everything. <laughs> Full blown, 100%. Like, I'm either going for it or I'm not. And I thought to myself, I'm 38. I have four kids. Um, I just lost my husband and my best friend. Um, what am I even thinking? Like, why am I thinking this? But I said, you know what? Something was telling me I have to listen to this voice. I have to listen to this thought. So I went to the dance studio where uh, my older kids have been going. Uh, this September will be 10 years that they've been there. The owner is, she teaches ballroom and Latin dancing, but she started out as a ballerina. So I went to her and I said, um, in order for me to process what just happened, uh, to process the grief, I need to start doing ballet again and it needs to be in point shoes. Can you please help me choreograph a dance? And she's like, yeah, just go buy the point shoes. So I went to the dance store, the one that I take my kids to all the time, but this time I went there by myself and I said, I need point shoes. And they're like, oh, well, what brand and type and size? And I said, I have no idea because I haven't bought a pair in over 20 years. I have no idea. So they helped me and it was like this magical moment. I'm like, I can't believe I'm buying point shoes right now. This is crazy. Um, and so she helped me, Sandra, the owner, helped me choreograph a dance. Um, it was the most beautiful thing. And, I, you know, I wore point shoes, so I did private lessons. Then I said, I need a partner because I want to do spins and lifts and I want to do all this stuff. So I'm like, I need a partner. I don't know any male dancers other than the dancers at the studio, but they all do ballroom and Latin dancing. So I went to Sarah's husband, Jack, and I said, um, I know you don't dance, but here's the concept. I'm gonna be wearing point shoes. All four of my kids are gonna be in the dance. My other very close friend, Paige, it wore my wedding dress in the dance with angel wings. So she, my friend Paige represented Sarah, and Jack represented Mark. And the whole dance was absolutely beautiful. I'll have to send you the video. I'd love to see it, yeah. And so we danced together. And then at the end, um, my friend Paige, who represented Sarah, goes one way. And my friend Jack, who represented Mark, went another way. And then I walk out a different way with the kids. And it just represented, we have to go on with our lives. So. They were gone, wow. but we went off together um, at the end. And it was just like the most amazing thing ever. Um, 
So beautiful. We need to do a sponsor break now, but we'll come back with that. That is just the imagery. It's really special. So this is Ann Reed on Be Happier in Spite of Your Life, Bow Brave Media, and we'll be back in two minutes. This is Be Happier in Spite of Your Life, Ann Reed on Bow Brave TV Network. So we're back with Valerie. She has just finished describing the lovely dance that she and her kids did to really commemorate her passing of her husband. And um, she's now to the next part of her saga. So Valerie, come on down. <laughs> next part of my saga. Um, <laughs> so um, just to finish 2019, so Mark passed away in April, Sarah passed away in May, and then six months later, my grandmother passed away from dementia. Um, she actually passed away, I think, two or three days before the performance that I was just describing. So it really, even though the dance was choreographed with Mark and Sarah in mind, it actually turned out to be um, in her honor when I actually performed it. Um, so that was 2019. I lost three really important people in my life. It was awful. Um, and then March of 2020 was COVID. Um, so my kids were home. Um, Four kids homeschooling. That would do me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was not fun at all. Um, but while everybody was complaining about the pandemic, I'm like, as long as nobody's dying or anything, like it's fine, you know, whatever. Um, so then when I thought things were going back to normal, meaning my kids went back to school so and say, what is normal? You know, like <laughs> nobody was dying and they were going back to school. So I'm like, this is good. Maybe we're, you know, moving in the right direction. Um, so pretty much as soon as they went back to school, um, I was diagnosed with stage two invasive ductal carcinoma. So stage two breast <laughs> cancer in March of 2021. So thank God they were back in school at least because if they were home and I was going through breast cancer treatment, that I don't even know. Uh, so I was diagnosed in the beginning of March of 2021 and I had my first surgery on May 5th. I remember it was Cinco de Mayo because I wore <laughs> a sombrero to the hospital. And say, you do have to describe some of the outfits that you wore when you were doing radiation, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was the first, the first part was the uh, bilateral mastectomy with reconstruction. So that was the first part of my treatment. And um, my mom dropped me off at the hospital and I had a huge sombrero. And it was just really <laughs> funny because I think in the hospital, sometimes the nurses and doctors don't even know what day it is. Uh, so they, my doctor came up to me and they were like, why are you wearing a sombrero? I'm like, it's Cinco de Mayo. And they're like, oh, I get it now. Uh, so that was Glad funny. there's a reason, right? <laughs> and so once I told them what day it was, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it now. Um, so uh, the first part of my surgery, the, the uh, breast surgeon came in and took, removed all of my breast tissue. And then the second part of my surgery, the plastic surgeon came in and put in implants. So it was like a six hour surgery. Um, so that was phase one of my breast cancer treatment. Phase two, I had 24 radiation treatments. So I had to go Monday through Friday. Uh, I had to go to the cancer center and that was for five weeks. And I just remember them showing me the schedule. They printed out the schedule and I almost left because I'm like, I have four kids at home. It's summertime and I have to come here every weekday for five weeks. I'm like, how... How is that going to work? But I didn't have a choice. So um, I decided before starting radiation that somehow I was going to come up with, it was supposed to be 25 treatments. I'll get to that in a minute, but I had 24 treatments. So I had a different t-shirt and a different theme for every treatment. So it started out with just the different t-shirts. By the time I got to my 10th treatment, I was bringing in boxing gloves and like you know, posing with the radiation techs and pretending I'm punching them and tying them up with the Wonder Woman lasso and wearing my point shoes and tutus with umbrellas. And I mean, it just kept getting more and more interesting. So I actually loved radiation. I really did make You're it the fun. the only person I've ever heard say that, by the way. Same. I've never heard anybody say, and I, I chopped my radiation. 
Yes. And my radiologist was amazed. Um, you know, especially I found out I have a gene mutation. I have an ATM gene mutation. So on top of nobody ever liking radiation in the history of ever, um, the gene mutation that I have was actually supposed to make it worse. Like I was supposed to get a really bad rash on my chest and become like even more fatigued than like the average person. And I just, I don't know, I just told myself, like, I'm just going to make it fun. Whatever happens, happens. And I had a lot of fun and I felt amazing during radiation. Oh. Like I felt amazing. So the one day I actually asked the radiologist if anybody had ever said that before. And he said, absolutely not. No. I have never heard this. He said, the more, the deeper you get in, he said, the treatments build on each other. Usually people become exhausted. Yeah. And I had so much energy. I, I had but more that's energy than I normally do. Because you're a superwoman. Look at your outfit yes, today that you wore. <laughs> and actually, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's where the whole Wonder Woman thing started. Um, I am woman. Not, oh, yes. I'm not into comic books or anything like that. And I never really had any connection with Wonder Woman. But my last radiation treatment, I ordered a shirt and it had a huge Wonder Woman W on the middle, but the middle part was the pink uh, breast cancer ribbon. So uh -huh. I ordered the accessories. So I had the Wonder Woman headband, I had the gloves and I had the lasso. So I put that on with the t-shirt and I tied up the radiation tech and took pictures. So my last radiation treatment was where Wonder Woman, that's how it all started. And then it just took off after that. Um, so phase two was the, you know, 24 radiation treatments. Then uh, September of 2021, I had my tubes and ovaries removed. Um, and now I am on medication for the next 10 years. Um, so my surgeries are done, radiation's finished. Uh, now I just take medication. And I know that you also, um, I've seen some of your writing or your podcast, or whatever, that you really believe in the power of the mind and that you were going to get through this. So anyway, we are going to take another break. And um, when we come back, I'd really like for you to explain what you've learned and what you want to do with this knowledge. And I know also you ended up with a new career, unbeknownst to you, <laughs> unplanned. But um, just why you're giving back. So anyway, Anne Reed, on Be Happier in Spite of Your Life. We'll be back in two minutes. Anne Reed on the Bow Brave TV Network and it's Be Happier in Spite of Your Life. And believe it or not, we were just talking in intermission. And uh, both Valerie and I agree in crazy ways. We've never been as happy or definitely never as appreciative of our lives than with all the stuff we've gone through. And all of our experiences have taken us on different paths than we ever imagined. But anyway, one of her quotes is, life isn't about waiting for the rain to pass. It's getting out there and dancing anyway. And I paraphrase that last part a teeny bit. But anyway, Valerie, would you really share what you want to do with the wisdom that you have gained through things you probably would not have chosen to endure. So I know at this point I have experienced enough that I realized a long time ago that all of these things are happening for a reason and that I can handle them and that I choose, I do believe that it's a choice. Um, I choose to, I always say to have a warrior mindset instead of a victim mindset. I never, ever, ever want people to look at me or my kids as victims because we're not. And we have just become more resilient and, you know, more appreciative. As you mentioned, that I love that word. I just, yeah. every time so I- So slide open is the only way I know how to say it. You see everything, you smell everything. I know- You realize what's important, what's not. Um, I, I know. I know. wasn't seeing in color after I lost my significant other and my mom so close together. It was really three or four months. And I didn't realize it at the time. It was afterwards. I was out on a bright sunny day. Kayak friend drug me out kayaking. And it was like, 
I can see everything. I can see the color of the water and the sky. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was just like all of my senses came back to life and they really haven't shut down. Right. Yeah. It, like, you know, one thing that we agree on, which is so important to let everybody know is that, you know, we're talking about cancer and, you know, my husband dying, my friend dying, my grandma dying, um, myself having breast cancer. I mean, so many traumatic events, but, you know, we're talking about all of this and we're on the other side of it right now. But at the time, you know, we're not under, we're not underestimating grief or the dark no. places because it happens and it happened to it us. Does. And, you know, it's not like two seconds later, I was like, oh, well, everybody died. I'm going to start doing ballet. I mean, I, as I mentioned, I was laying in bed for months uh, before <laughs> I decided to go back to ballet. So after my breast cancer treatment, I just start, I really wanted to start working on a book, but I realized how time consuming that is. So, um, you know, luckily podcasts are a popular thing now. And I was like, well, that would be really cool if I could just record, you know, an episode about like one thing, whether it's breast cancer or one of the other things I've experienced and then just post it and people can listen to it so quickly. It just seemed like almost too easy. Um, luckily my friend helps me with that because, uh, it probably wouldn't be that easy for me to do that. So I started my podcast, Dancing in the Rain with Valerie. Um, I, I don't know, maybe a week after my last surgery, I just felt ready to go. My ovaries were gone. I was more in control of my emotions. So I wasn't breaking down crying. I'm like, this is great. This is the best time for me to start a podcast. Um, so uh, then I also started modeling after breast cancer treatment. So basically a photographer posted something on Instagram that he was, you know, going to give somebody a free photo shoot. And I'm like, I've always wanted to model. That would be cool. <laughs> At this point, the little voices in my head, I don't even listen to them anymore. The little voice that told me maybe I shouldn't dance. And I'm like, the little voice that was saying, you know, maybe you're too old Why to not? model. Like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm 40 years old, single mom of four kids, just got over breast cancer treatment. It's the perfect time to start modeling. Like, why not? <laughs> so totally makes sense. So I did the photo shoot. I loved the photos. The photographer loved the photos. I posted them. And then it's kind of just taken on a life of its own since then. Um, I do photo shoots all the time. I actually did one earlier today. Um, I do photo shoots all the time. I do runway shows all the time. Um, it's like a whole other world that I absolutely love and it brings me so much joy. So I have dance, I have the modeling um, and it, it just makes me so happy. But to answer your question, I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. Sharing my wisdom, I plan on continuing with my podcast. Um, I love doing that and I get a lot of positive feedback about it. Um, I'm talking, it, a documentary is in the works. I'll just put it that way. Um, the book, whenever I have time to finish that will be a spare awesome. 10 minutes a day, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, in my spare time, I'll just write a book on the side. Um, but I feel honestly that I can't keep this knowledge, you know, to myself because I, feel I have, that way. I'm compelled. Yeah, I, I, feel I don't compelled. know how else I can't, to describe it. I can't keep it to myself. I don't want to keep it to myself. Why would I keep it to myself? Um, I'm a people person. I like talking, you know, I'm not saying everybody that goes through traumatic events, which is everybody, I'm not saying everybody has to write a book and start a podcast and go on people shows and openly talk about it. But what I do think is that they have to find something uh, to do that's on a soul level. So, a, yeah, you know, I love not just that. something you not just something you like to do something that is on your you know, that makes your soul happy. So that's why I went back to ballet. That is on a soul level for me. I like yoga. I like kickboxing. I like going to the gym, but that's not on a soul level for me. And I know that everybody has something that they can do on a soul level, whether it's painting or singing or writing anything, whatever it is that speaks to your soul, that's what's going to make the difference between surviving traumatic events or thriving. So if I was just continuing to do yoga or going to the gym, I would have survived, you know, losing my husband and my friend. But because I started ballet, that's what helped me thrive. So there's a difference. Yeah. Wow. 
I'm impressed <laughs> that you come out and can still laugh because I know what some of those dark moments are like. I think one of the worst things is that they seem like they won't end for a while. Mm -hmm. I think that's just, I don't know, when you're in your darkest moments. I mean, I had days that success was putting one foot in front of the other and I would give myself applause for it. You know, you also said, and it's something I agree with, that grief and joy can coexist. And I think that's something that when we get trapped a lot of times in the negativity or the pain that we forget that we can feel both. And you know what? It's okay to feel both. I think when you're talking about loss of people that we've loved and, and took big spaces in our life, none of them would have wanted us to have stayed in that black hole. At least not exactly. in my life and I don't think of yours. They want us to all go out and do something um, much so bigger. You, you just reminded me of a quote that I don't want to say I like came up with it, but I think I did because I've never seen it before. So everybody has heard, you know, it's okay to not be okay. And everybody knows that it's okay to cry and be depressed and we've all been there. But my quote is, it's okay to be okay. Meaning <laughs> that, you know, you know, even after losing my husband and my friend, and then I started dancing again, and I was posting pictures and videos on social media, I'm sure some people were confused. And I understand that. Um, but I found something to get myself through it. And to the grief doesn't go away. I'm always going to right. grieve there. the fact I'm always going to miss everybody in my life that has passed away. Of course, I'm, that never ends. But why not bring joy into my life? Why not? I can always revisit the grief, you know, if it's <laughs> yeah, if you um, feel you like, just, oh, I feel like feeling grief today. It's it, there. It's, it's accessible. Always there. You can always revisit it. Like, it's not like you're giving up one for the other. I'm not like, well, I just, I'm never going to cry about my husband or my friend or my grandmother ever again. I'm just going to dance and be happy all the time. That's not realistic. So the grief is always a part of me. Um, but in spite of that, I dance. So there's grief and joy together at the same time. They coexist yep. all the time. But I, I actually had t-shirts made that says it's okay to be okay because I've talked to people that have been through traumatic events and they're like, I actually kind of feel okay. And I'm like, you don't have to be, yeah, you don't have apologize to apologize. <laughs> if you're okay, that's great. It's okay to be okay. I feel like in this you know, society in general, it's just like once you go through, you lose somebody or you have cancer, it's like you're supposed to stay down. And I'm here to tell people the opposite. Like you have to pick yourself nope, back up. You and if you tell start. yourself, once you have that, you know, Wonder Woman mindset or that warrior mindset or thriver mindset in place, it will carry you through the rest of your life. Because as you mentioned, yeah. it's like 50% yeah. good and 50% bad. And you just have to know that no matter what happens, like the worst of the worst thing could happen, but you will still get through it. It is possible because you're here to tell everybody and I'm here to tell everybody that we have been through a lot. And as long as you believe in your heart that it's possible, you will get through it. Right. Um, we're going to break now. We'll come back. And if you very briefly just want to give people um, how they can reach you or see your podcast and whatever. And read Bow Brave TV Network, Be Happier in Spite of Your Life. And read back with Valerie on Be Happier in Spite of Your Life. Valerie, thank you so much for joining me and saying a lot of things I say. I'm sure people appreciated hearing from somebody else. And I would love if you would give all your social media handles. So if people want to reach you and if you have one last thought, share it. Okay. Um, on Facebook, it's just my name, it, which is V-A-L-A-R-I-E. And my last name is spelled I-O-S-U-E. On Instagram, Valerie underscore Ballerina 429. Uh, my podcast is Dancing in the Rain with Valerie. So my website is Dancing in the Rain with Valerie.com. My podcast is on pretty much all of the podcast platforms. And I just wanted to end my interview with a quote. It's my favorite quote, and it pretty much sums up just life. <laughs> life is amazing, and then it's awful, and then it's amazing again. And in between the amazing and the awful, it's ordinary and mundane and routine. Breathe in the amazing, hold on through the awful, and relax and exhale during the ordinary. 
that's just living, heartbreaking, soul healing, amazing, awful, ordinary life, and it's breathtakingly beautiful. So true. Well, if you want to reach me, Anne Reed, and it's A-N-N-E and R-E-I-D, my Instagram is at Reed Coaching. Facebook is Anne Reed at Ann Reed Coaching 111. LinkedIn is Ann Reed, and my website is Reed Coaching. I really do want to thank Valerie, and we're going to change the mode a little bit next week and have Stacy back, my friend who is a dating coach now. We thought it would be very appropriate to have her come back on Valentine's Day. So we will be here with Stacy Perry. And I really want to thank you for taking the time to listen today. I appreciate that. Take care. This has been Be Happier in Spite of Your Life with host Ann Reed. Tune in each week as Ann shows how each of us has the choice to make the best of things with the reward of sustaining better health, wealth, and relationships. Tuesdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.